Jose from the Department of Wacky Ideas with yet another unusual topic today. Uh, I like to turn wood. I like to uh, to use the wood lathe and turn chunks of raw wood into uh, into different types of items, bowls and spindles and all sorts of things. <laughs> with this tool called the lathe. Now our makerspace was fortunate to receive the donation of a Conover wood lathe, uh, a beautiful uh, wood lathe uh, a few years ago and uh, I've been playing with it a little bit every now and then. But the wood lathe is only half of the tool set you need for for turning wood. The other half are gouges and gouges are these tools that you use against the lathe to actually shape the wood. Now gouges uh, uh, come in a variety of sizes and shapes but the one thing they all have in common is for them to work right they have to be sharp and sharpening uh, gouges is a is a skill set of its own. It's something you have to learn if you're going to be using the wood, the, uh, wood lathe and uh, so it's something that I've wanted to learn more about for a while. I was lucky enough last week uh, to be at the Florida Folk Festival over in White Springs, Florida, uh, where uh, one of the featured folk artists uh, was a fellow named Ralph Callender. Ralph is the, uh, the, the president of the South Florida Woodturners Association. Uh, Ralph is a fantastic artist. He and his colleague were up there showing off their work and demonstrating the use of the wood lathe but I talked Ralph into spending a few minutes with me explaining how do you get your gouges sharp and how do you keep them sharp. So let's meet Ralph. I've got, I've got an eight inch slow speed grinder. A Rikon or something like uh, that? It's a no name. Uh, a no name. It's, a no name, even it's a no name grinder that was actually given to me by a former member. Uh, and I bought the CBN wheels from uh, Wood Turner's Wonders. Now let's talk about these wheels. These we the one we have on our on our uh, slow speed grinder is a white uh, white wheel. White wheel, yeah. Yeah, I'm what, not fond of the white wheels. So tell me about these things. I bet they're a lot more expensive. They are expensive. Uh, I don't recall what I paid for them. They were on sale. You got two different grits. I got two grits. I've got a 180 here on the left a and a 220 on the right. Uh, this has grit on both sides of it so you can use the side of the wheel mm -hmm. and what I've got I've got the Wolverine uh, sharpening system well, let's, that, let's talk about that the yeah. two bases and it's got the V what they call the V arm okay which you adjust and you use it you can use it uh, like this for some sharpening. Uh -huh. You can actually put the tool in there and sharpen like that. Yes, sir. But I don't do that. I actually use the, what's called the very grind jig. Uh -huh. Okay. And it's adjustable for different angles. And that goes, that goes over the tool itself. This not the actually handle. does go over the tool. Yeah. Okay. And this, this particular model, they make two sizes. This one will I have, can get a three quarter inch diameter gouge in there. Okay, so what you do is you bring your tool in with the with the with the um, the, uh, the flute up, flute toward the yeah towards the top, and you set a your distance. Okay, they have a recommended distance of well, two you, inches. You made, you made your apply with gauge. I made a gauge. Yes, sir. Okay, so. I set that, tighten her up at two inches is what they recommend for an eight inch wheel and one and three quarter for a six inch wheel. Okay. And then what I use is currently I'm using these. Uh, Those are also Wolverine? 
No, these are actually the made Raptor. by Craft Supply, I believe, uh -huh. Raptor, and they're setup gauges in different different angles. Right. I've got five of them from uh, 35 degrees, 40, 50, 45, and 60. Now for my bowl gouges, I use a 60 degree nose angle. So how you do this is you set this in the V arm and come up until these two points touch the wheel. Okay. And then you lock the arm in place, the V arm in place. And set the point of the very grind. Now to get a repeatable grind uh, and these particular gauges, they recommend that you set this arm, and I think it's about 22 degrees, and just leave it there, mm -hmm. okay? And that's what I've done with this very grind jig. I have another one that I have set at a different angle mm -hmm. for different grinds that I use this particular setup jig for. Okay, so I will set this up yeah, like this. Pending right there, Ralph. That's really nice, man. And you, and I this actually was in an article in the AW magazine. Is that right? About six months before they brought these out. Huh, huh. So of course I said, well, that looks good. It's repeatable. So to do the actual sharpening, once you have a profile that you like. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, it's just a matter of popping this in and then I like to hold this jig right here and right here okay and I stand off to the side you should be wearing safety glasses safety third and you actually should be wearing breathing protection yeah that's because the fine metallic powder this thing throws yeah, off yeah uh, a yeah. lot of guys I mean, just the sawdust that comes working using the table saw is carcinogenic you know yeah I mean just uh, you know it's oh absolutely yeah. um, so a lot of guys will put a magnet down here. Oh, that's a good idea. Like okay, a, yeah. and even better is to put a magnet inside a Ziploc bag. Perfect, man. Just and all. that way it gets stuck, but it don't get stuck to the magnet. I love it, man. So yeah, I love it. drop this in here, and I just come up and bring that around. And I'm not putting any real pressure on this. Okay, I'm just basically the weight of the tool. I'm not forcing this in. That's it. It's sharp. Uh huh. Okay. And and, uh, and tell me about uh, like when you're doing a That's hot. yeah when you're doing a job. How often do you uh, do you sharpen? Once during the not job. Not often or? enough. Yeah. Is how often you sharpen. <laughs> uh, I don't remember the exact numbers, but when that wood is spinning at say a thousand RPM, and depending on the diameter, you are cutting miles of wood yeah. in a short period of time. Okay, so most people don't sharpen often enough. Yes, sir. When you start noticing a difference in the cut and it's not cutting nicely and you got a little, a little more pressure to cut, it's time to sharpen, it's past time to sharpen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay, so depending on the wood, uh, you know, depending on the wood, how abrasive the wood is. Some wood is very abrasive. Year well, I I don't, I I mostly turn fresh cut wood. Do you? Yeah. Huh. Um, you know, there's different ways to do it, do the turning. Uh, we Most of us do what's called twice turn. So we will take green wood and turn it into a bowl and we will leave it a percentage uh, I believe you want to leave it 10% thicker than you plan to have it. Than you plan to have it at least. And depending on the species of wood, some moves a lot more than others. Okay, down in South Florida, we have an abundance of mahogany. Yeah, yeah. And it's extremely stable. Yeah. So you can take and turn a bowl and let it sit for depending on your conditions. I, I will bring mine sometimes into the house, air conditioned and it'll dry up pretty quick, depending on how thick I've left it. And uh, if you put it back on the lathe to true it up, 
there's not very much that needs to be taken off. Now, if you take a piece of the live oak that grows down there and turn it and let it sit for a couple of months, when you come back, you're going to have a football. I mean, I've seen them egg-shaped by three quarters of an inch. Oh,